Welcome back, everybody. Susan is in top form today. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to another in the series of quick views. We love we love bead locks. We love tires. We especially love any tire that the the old uh, fuddy duddies over at Sorka uh, see fit to ban. So here is a, a delightful little tower of band tires. Starting at the top, Hot Bodies Rover, sometimes called the HPI Rover because they're uh, pretty much exclusively distributed by HPI, HPI from everything I've seen. But as they say, right on the, right on the HB for Hot Bodies. This is the 1.9 Rover in the red compound. They are very soft, some of the softest foams I've ever felt. And still like proper sticky. This is a J Concepts landmine in 1.9. Oh. I'm, I'm burying the, the, the lead here. Uh, 94 millimeters tall, 42 millimeters wide. So for a tire this short, that's, that's very wide. I mean, typically you can get a 1.9 tire is going to be just a little bit bigger, probably around 50 millimeters wide on a deep woods. So 94 by 42 on that little guy. 126 by 49 just under two inches wide. The topic of today's discussion, the Hot Bodies Rover EX 2.2 in the ultra soft, and they mean it when they say it, pink compound, which is 138. So what is that, 12 millimeters? 12 millimeters bigger than a 1.9 rupture, but a, a whopping beefy, 63 millimeters wide. Compare that to a 2.2 rupture at 152 millimeters tall and and just, odd to say that, just 61 millimeters wide. See, we're a bit wider. And there's quite a bit more tread block in here as well. So they do indeed, they fit um, uh, kind of all the sizes. What we wish, what we wish here as enthusiasts is that there was one more size right in here, like, say, 4.65. A 4.65 in the Rover or the Rupture would be amazing because then you could fit them on things that have, like, oh, I don't know, fenders. So I have already mounted the other three. They come with, again, much like the foams that are in the 1.9s, the softest. These are very soft. Soft to the point where... Like, they can't even maintain their shape properly. These have been hit with the heat gun and left to sit. Uh, they definitely had the feel of an insert and tire that was in the bag for quite a while. Uh, before I shove that in there, I need to show. We've got full double bead lip. We've again got those little oval stiffeners, bead stiffeners right here on the inside, which should help side hilling. We have little bit of ribbing, and we have magical sparkles. Apparently, that's where the magical genies live, is all the little inside the sparkles. As I said, not as gummy as some, but they are very soft, and the foams are... Like, I would call these foams soft. These are definitely not mediums. They just barely fill out the tire because the tire is so big and then once the foam is in it i mean uh there's the old 2.2 canyon trail these are really really wide uh you're not putting these on anything with a fender because once that foam goes in there i mean seriously that is measuring right around 70 millimeters wide now, it isn't that wide when mounted because you get your ring inside. And despite this being a very soft, very open cell foam that, I mean, look at the, the beadlock ring is comical. You get that in there inside the lip. And the trick that I arrived upon when mounting the other three, these actually mount like far easier than one would anticipate, is I kind of nudge the insert up towards one side so that we can minimize the amount of foam that's going to try to pinch in the bead. I mean, look how far down that is. 
So ordinarily, this would not be a recipe for success. I get the driver ready. We've got we've got our first screw ready to go. I know from the other ones, I'm, I'm still peering over my shoulder. I, I have mounted them B forward, which is pink dot out. Got to have that pink dot out to show the pink dot. Like that drops in there that easy. And because these big thick 2.2s have that huge ring in the back, I just want to make sure that the holes are lined up. And I mean, that that's that's about how hard it is. Because both the tire and the foam are so soft, there's there's nothing to fight you. Uh, in mountability terms, uh, this is what we in the industry call an A+. One of the, if not the easiest tires to mount. And because it has that big double lip, it will really grab a hold of that beadlock ring. So let's get these, let's get these cross tightened here. And there we go. There's a 2.2, and they are, they are soft. Like, like real soft. We will see how that impacts us as the recipient of these is misdirection, which is a little bit out of, and, and I'm making sure, okay, we're, we're all B forward. I double checked. I missed one during the 1.9 test. We had one A forward because on those, I just went by the pink dot or the red dot in that case. And I faced all the red dots inward and one of the red dots, one of the pairs was like in between. So, so there you go. So, okay. So misdirection outside of tire to outside of tire on the tires that just came off of her. She had these fitted to the exact same wheels. She was 10 and a quarter inches wide and she is now 11 and three eighths, maybe closer to 11 and a half, but I mean. So she picked up an inch and a quarter in width, which would be what, 32 mil, she is 32 millimeters wider. She is rocking a wheelbase of, uh, yeah, she's right at 12.3. So what we're gonna find out here, we're gonna take these out on the tire test protocol. And what we're gonna find out is if she is now under damped or under sprung or oversprung or whatever is gonna come up. She's running extremely soft springs all the way around, which was not a problem before, but now we definitely have the potential for some pendu pendulum effect because the tires are so big we're gonna we're, we're gonna see how it goes she will have no other setup changes she'll run the tires just as they are and my only fresh memory is of these which were better than anticipated but not like not outright remarkable I wasn't like wow I was surprised at how good they were Of course, inside misdirection, tiny little baby AM32 running a tiny little flash hobby 3530. She's geared down a good bit. Oh, and for those unfamiliar, I always go into these things acting as if everyone knows the ins and outs of every member of the Canyon fleet. Misdirection is not a Capra. That is a misdirect. She is a Capra cage and Capra shocks. And that post is rotating. There we go. She's a Capra cage and Capra shocks and everything else is element. She's element axles, links, Bauhaus element skid. She has a Stealth X gearbox in there. So she is far more element than she is axle. Kind of hints the name. We are going to take her out to the course. She's going to run through the 12 steps of the Canyon Tire Test Protocol. And we are going to see how the Hot Bodies Rover EX 2.2 does in our testing 
and I make a, a determined effort not to get the hopes too high, but based on what we experienced with the 1.9 Rover, baby, my hopes are high. How high? Higher than that. Let us hope that they are not dashed. The drive out to the course is generally informative and today was no different. I have yet to see a tire that offers as much tire compliance as these. Uh, it is like driving on four clouds. Uh, I assume that there will be some drawbacks to driving on four clouds, but uh, that is our objective to find them. They are as absolutely <laughs> as grabby as one would anticipate. Burst up. Yeah, these are, <laughs> these are the, like, like angry, grabby balloons. I don't think we're going to get, yeah, I was going to say, I don't think we're going to lift a rear corner on there. I think we've got, we've got plenty of flex. Still, I've got a, got a little bit of the belly in. How's that driving? Oh, wow. That cut in was actually really tight. I was concerned that the, the overall width of that tire was gonna, was gonna hamper my ability to turn in. How's drag brake holding up to this? That is not surprising. That is a very small motor and a very small ESC. The ESC is about the size of a postage. It's about the size of a tiny little BEC. It's very small. It is actually smaller than the BEC. She's running a Castle CCBEC 10 amp and it's bigger than the speed control. That is that is definitely acceptable. Let's see if we can let's see if we can twist it up. Yes. Wow. That's that's a lot of grip. There's a real unmistakable moon buggy vibe going here. These things are big. You can see the pumpkin hung there. Can we pull the front end around? Yes. Then can can we unstick? Yes. Okay, how how direct? Are we gonna shuttle at all here? There's not a lot of weight on these tires, but they are very soft. I'm trying to get that passenger rear to kind of get around there. There's a little there's a little notch there, right there. And once we're over the notch, it's pretty well direct. Little shutter there, just a little counter steer the other way and we're right through. It's kinda, I was actually interested to see how it handled that. You can see how much more tan they are now. Yeah, they are grab, they're grabbing everything off the ground. The pink compound is very sticky. A little hang in the rear there. Okay, I'm gonna go straight at over the slick here. It's usually a spot where we run out of traction. We'll direct it back the other way. I kind of want to try to pull straight up over the biggest rock right like that. That is a that is a platinum tier performance. As it killed those two so quickly, let's try this straight, the gut shot at Daphne's. Because there's not as much grip down here. You kind of get wedged in between a symphony of slick rocks. Right there, we're a little bit in between the wheelbase. But that, that clearance ability right there. I, I knew exactly where that passenger rear needed to go. She doesn't have dig or anything fancy. So I'm trying to push it around. There it is. Yeah, uh, lateral, lateral grip is obnoxious. And fresh out of the package, no prep. We mount them up. We don't even wash off the flaky stuff. These are... 
these are grabby. I get the feeling that here at the extreme angle that will be brought about by the crack, uh, we're not going to have it. We're going to overdrive the front with the rear. Just too much, too much drive. See, we don't have enough front weight to keep the tires down. The front is out gripping. The, the rear is out gripping the front because we don't have enough weight to keep the front down. Like right there, the passenger front is just barely touching. No. She needs some of those big, heavy trial knuckles. She's currently running the SSDs. There might be a there might be a knuckle swap going on around here, but yeah, when you get into something where she can, if she can keep the front down, uh, point that front end where you want to go, and it's going to go there. And uh, absolutely nothing in the way of fenders or anything to get hung up. I feel if there's going to be an Achilles heel, uh, it's going to be the softest inserts I've ever felt on a side hill. But again, now we're getting into a contact patch thing here. The look at the width of those tires. They, I th she looks like she could drive on water. So I'm seeing no fold over on the rear or the front. I can, I can position, I am positionable. What I need to do, I know how this area tracks. So what I wanna do is drop driver rear down a little bit so that I can get a little bit more attitude into, I guess it's, uh, this is sort of Yella's crest. I don't know if I got that corner low enough and they have so much traction that it's, we're, we're trying to balance Set her down. We're trying to balance the amount of forward drive with the amount of transfer onto that driver rear, but she's got it. See, that was the, that was one of the sections where I was worried the springs might be too soft. We're getting too much collapse or that the oil was too light, but no, it turns out it's not a problem. She has maximum compliance. Here at the step up or the pull up, I really have to determine what the name is. Uh, no one has managed to breach. There, there's kind of a section. I forgot my laser. There's a section right here that looks a little smoother. No one has managed to breach directly over that on a what we would call a conventional wheelbase. Uh, Zoidberg has done it. RoboKitty has done it with 13 inch and 15 and three quarter inch wheelbases respectively. So it's not as much as a, of a breakover thing as it is ability to transfer weight to that front axle. And, and, oh, she's right there. Let's, 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 let's take another uh, hit at that. Oh, it's so close. She needs the tiniest bit more front axle weight. It might be so little as just uh, a brass diff cover. She needs a little bit more weight on that front axle because see, it's still pushing down. How's she on the descent? Oh, oh. Absolutely planted. Swinging it around. Headed for the L. Got a little out of shape there, probably due to the width. Getting a little bit of bounce. It's honestly, it's difficult to find the right line to get those front tires in because they are so wide. I'm hitting obstacle, I'm hitting combinations of crags that I don't think anyone else has come in contact with. Trying to, trying to position here. Yeah, once, once we find the position, she's gonna wrap it back, yeah. Yeah, the position ability there is, it was never out of shape. Any steering input I gave it, the tire went exactly right there. Absolutely no bump required. Now we'll see the descent here. Oh, just, just planted to the ground. I don't anticipate any uh, breaching issues here at the angles to oblivion. 
We'll take the left-hander first, get a tire up over. There's just there's so much there's so much traction because it's like it's like the tire is all side lug. Like no matter where rubber touches, it grabs. How are we gonna do on the pivot? Uh, how about so tight that I had to I had to steer back a little bit. Went right over the top there. That little kick of the tail was as close yet as she's gotten to going tail over nose. Yeah, bumpability is really there. We'll see the bumpability more in the next section. Yeah, at low speed, these are, these are glue. I don't, I don't think I have seen a rig or a tire have as little issue with that as Misdirection did right there. Let's just hit you know, this, get into some verticality. This is an unofficial, this is 10.5 here. I want to see if she can pull right there. Cut it. Yeah. Half the rigs in this fleet won't do what, what just happened right there. I wasn't, I wasn't looking. I, I turned my head. I saw movement out of the corner of my eye. That's not her fault. Take my word for it. There was a kid or a dog. There was a dog or a kid. It was moving really fast. We may indeed hit two angles at dead limit as I get the feeling that Let's see the pole first, the non-bump. An, there's an underhang there. Little bit in between the wheelbase. But you get you get it aimed where you need it. And just straight through. You saw a little lift of the nose there. There's so much drive that when that weight transfers to the rear, like right here. That's a flippable moment. So we didn't actually, we haven't really gotten to see a proper bump. Haven't had to use one. Just little, little tail kicky. Got a little, got a little trail donkey there. Yeah, a little whoop, a little hop. Could be a dread now see, get that little oblique approach. Just straight on, which leads me to wonder, what do we get if we look at Daphne's third here? This is a this is a section where everybody gets shuttled right because you're trying to grab, you're trying to hook that spot that the driver front is on, and we still get we get a little bit of the shuttle. Let's try bump through. Can't, can't quite pull it. That is, and the reason behind that is, that was that was a superb pivot. But uh, that is a portal line. Uh, you you really kind of need portals to get through there. Something about how the rear tire hooks on that ledge. She, she and then you know, so that's why we call this side over here Jake's side because this is the straight axle side. And. She does it with a plum. Extraordinarily well done. We've got just one more on the tire test protocol, and then we're going to do a little bit of a wrap up, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit. And there's, it, it doesn't really matter what this thing does on dirt transition because, because the tire score for this has been predetermined. Transition between surfaces and between this tire test and the one that came before, uh, there's some good holes dug there. So. She has no advantages here, other than the fact that she's equipped with 2.2 rovers. Probably the easiest pull-up I've ever seen. And on the down, oh, didn't get, didn't give it a sufficient-sized helping of beans. I'm just kind of curious here, how much, 
how much traction does that front end have? All of it. That is the that is a that is a pull up. Uh, that section. I'll put her rear tire right over it, right there. That is five and a half inches of straight vertical off of unpacked dirt onto concrete. Just pulled straight over. So that was all just front work. And I think, like she's great right now. And on these tires, magnificent. But throw some front weight at it and we're talking outright spectacular. Just because when she gets to the extreme, like these tires are doing everything they can but there's not enough pushing that front axle down. The maneuverability and the positionability of this tire outfitted to this vehicle is unparalleled. These are, and uh, of course, I'm gonna get the question, the, the obvious question. Well, are they as good as ruptures? Well, one would have to argue that are ruptures as good as these because the Rover, to my knowledge, predates the rupture by some significant amount of time and the rupture at the very least took some um, uh, great amount of inspiration from the rover that that was that weight i mean look at where she was look at where she is The low speed climb of these is insane. There is a sole drawback to these, in my mind. I don't care that they're Sorka banned. If, if anything, that kind of makes me want them a little more. What the 2.2 Rover does is wield the double-edged sword of strength and weakness in the doing the same thing. These tires are 63 millimeters wide, two and a half inches which for many rigs in many applications is a problem, <laughs> understandably. Seeing as typically in a 1.9, you're looking at maybe, so they'd be 475 by two inch wide, 49 inch, I mean 49 millimeter, 50 millimeter wide. Some more narrow, like Wild Peaks. Forget about pin seekers, those things are barely 30 millimeters wide. These are, these might be the widest tires I've ever tested, and that includes 2.2 USD stickies, which are enormous and weigh a half a pound per tire. These straddle the size, they're small for a 2.2, but they're large for a 1.9. So I understand that fitting them on things is going to be somewhat problematic. If you want to throw these on a gatekeeper or an ecto, you're almost certainly going to need extensions. She's been running hub extensions for some time because a Capra cage is designed around a Capra axle. And when you put an element axle on it, you really narrow it down to the point where no matter what tire I was running on the front, if I turned like that, the tire was straight into the cage, even not under compression. So the application for this tire is a little more limited than some others. But I will say this. She just said it. Uh, that is, this is loose over hard, this train. You can see how it's all kind of different modeled colors. The mix was not rich. So it's basically like very hard sand that she's driving on. So vehicles are just cutting it loose. If I, if I bring her down here to the bottom, you will see right here, if we, it's just chalky powder down there. These tires absolutely master loose over hard. So if you have some sort of a buggy and you can actually find them, the 2.2, Ro Rover EX is a hundred percent Canyon certified. These are ridiculous 
and the ladies behind the controls of misdirection have informed me that in uh, no uncertain terms you will have to pry these tires out of their cold dead hands uh, misdirection has found her tires for what I would presume to be ever. This tire was everything that we would hope it to be. And in this application, hey buddy, what's up buddy? I think the 2.2 Rover here is indeed superior to a 1.9 rupture. And you know, we can test that in the future at a later date. We can put them side by side and head to head have her try the exact same skills on the other tires, but these are so big and so wide and so pillowy that I think they're, oh, he's still there. Man, that camouflage really works. What's that? Uh... So yeah, what a, what, uh, what a triumph of a tire. I am, my expectations were very high and the performance delivered is at a higher level than my expectations and that does not happen often these are these are phenomenal they added more steering they added more forward drive the compliance is through the roof what a fantastic tire if you have a rig that will fit them definitely look into getting yourself a set because they are they are ri absolutely ridiculous and if their performance on loose over hard is that good their performance in loose stuff should be amazing they should clear remarkably well it's stock foam it's stock everything i don't see the need to change anything except to put some weight on her front axle which has nothing to do with the tires and was brought about purely because the tires offer so much grip an unimaginable amount of grip i shoot out an extra special special extra special thanks i can only remember his actual name and not his screen name on youtube and I don't want to just shout people's names out on the internet. So a shout out to the channel subscriber supporter who sent me these tires for testing. And as addition, and onto the permanent roster of the Canyon. I thank you so much. I thank all the rest of you to a, you know, to a slightly lesser degree for, for hanging in, for, for coming by. Uh, please do comment below if you have any comments. Uh, like if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't. Do consider channel membership. Uh, you know, it keeps, it keeps things rolling and the kindness and benevolence of supporters of the Canyon, the friends of the Canyon, the unofficial Patreons sending stuff for testing and consumption here in the Canyon are most appreciated. And I hope I make that clear enough in all of these videos. Uh, as of yet we are, I mean, we're not sponsored, but we're, we here, and I use the Royal, we, me and the rigs. Are, are sponsored by you, the members and the viewers of the Canyon. Uh, the money that is uh, gathered from you all and the goods that are gathered from you all are what keeps the place going, Honest, honestly. Because it is supposed to be a hobby and not a jobby, so it is best that it says self-sustaining and what I have attempted to assemble out here. I mean, when I, when I gaze like this, when I look this way like this, and then we pull back like that. This alone, I mean, you know, I try not to sit back and think about how much money I've spent on bags of concrete, but it's more than a normal person would spend. I can tell you that. So thank you uh, very much, everybody, for watching. We'll have something uh, again for you very soon. I don't know what next week's junk view is going to be. I like to get a little temporality into each video so that people will go, what is he talking about? Uh, next week's junk view, I don't know. We'll find out. We'll, we'll get something and we'll find out. We'll catch you on the next one. In between now and one meeting again, please, all of you out there, do me a favor. Do your very best. Have a good one, everybody. We will, we will see you in the next one and we will catch you on the flip side.